And then our uh, most common question, and this might be partly because half our law firm's a criminal defense firm, um, but I have criminal history. Can I participate in the cannabis industry? It depends. It depends again. <laughs> so how does it depend, Nick? Uh, so the MMFLA and adult use law, the MRTMA, have two different kinds of sets of rules. Um, for the medical side of things, there's a 10-year felony and then a five-year controlled substance, theft, dishonesty, or fraud misdemeanor uh, complete Probably. mandatory bar. So if you uh, fall within those 10 or five year rules, you are automatically ineligible for a license. If you are an owner of the if license owner, so or a manager, employee, or a corporate officer of correct. the license, that, but you can still be an employee of the license. Correct, so yeah, it depends if you're an owner, if you're considered a applicant or supplemental applicant. Um, mm -hmm. If you're a regular employee, uh, there's a 10 year requirement to not have a felony, otherwise you need permission from the MRA. So you can okay. still be, if you have a felony within that time frame, get approval from the regulators to work as a normal employee for that facility. There's a different uh, limitation. If you're a driver for a secure transporter, you can't have certain types of misdemeanors in the last five years as an employee. Um, so, you know, there's ways to participate. There's almost always a way you can participate. Um, unless your criminal history is relevant to providing alcohol, I'm sorry, <laughs> alcohol, providing <laughs> cannabis to minors, there's a, there's a prohibition on the adult use side for being an employee if you have a criminal charge for providing cannabis to minors. Um, mm -hmm. but and, that, and that goes the same for, um, for on the adult use side, mm -hmm. applicants who have a conviction, whether that be a felony or misdemeanor for distribution of controlled substances to a minor, that's a complete bar yep. to being an owner or applicant or... Yep. But other criminal Employee. history, uh, it can be relevant. So that's something we should touch on as well. Mm -hmm. There are you know, statutory prohibitions that the state doesn't have any gray area about. Uh, but then there are, you could have some criminal history that would be in the merit-based uh, bucket where they can still deny you for any criminal history if it is a, um, a sign that you might contribute to this company's inability to follow the rules and regs. Mm -hmm. um, Nick probably knows the right. So on, on the MMFLA <laughs> side, Section 4023 yeah, I, I has the <laughs> permissive grounds, uh, yep. the permissive grounds for denying people, which includes moral character, yep. reputation, integrity, uh, which kind of goes to the heart of you know your criminal history, your past litigation that might you know obviously in the business world you're going to have a you know you may have some run-ins with. Uh, former business colleagues or other companies that end up, you know, involving you in litigation. But um, as we see the regulators kind of shifting, and this is, I think, a better example on the adult use side, uh, the law and the rules specifically say we care about this as it pertains to you running a business. You know mm -hmm. how how it actually goes to the heart of you running a business. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you have some some issues uh, with law enforcement or run-ins in the past that don't necessarily go to any, you know, have anything to do if they're not relevant or probative or, or really have anything to do with you having to run a business or, or doing that uh, with, you know, with the public interest and good in mind. Or, you know, the same goes with litigation where we don't, you know, there's a probate case here and there, there's a contract dispute. They're not as potentially, you know, and the language doesn't kind of track with that where they may not be as concerned with that as they might be, you know, Fair Labor Standards Act violations or, you know, union yeah. disputes or things like that, failure to pay employees. That's really, you know, so as you can see, we're kind of shifting or at least on the adult use side because of how yeah. the law is worded towards actually applying what you know, some factors that might yeah. be critical to that to those decisions. Yeah. Now, I think what a lot of people get confused about the criminal history question is this, am I prohibited from participating? Not always, does that mean I don't have to talk about it? No, you will. If you're on these applications as a supplemental applicant, as an owner, as an officer, even in some cases as an employee, you, you oftentimes have to disclose your criminal history whether it disqualifies you or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't, just because you, are allowed to be a supplemental applicant doesn't mean you get to pretend you don't have criminal history and, and sometimes if you fail to disclose that criminal history you'll get denied if you hadn't disclosed it correctly you would not have been